found it just as well. Another couple of hours, he'd been coming out of someone's tap. They were very badly charred. The killer deliberately tied his victims with garden wire, doused them with petrol. better to do, Inspector. She was such a beautiful horse. Why did you have her put down? The vet said she had to be destroyed. Now let's crack on with these murders, shall we? And uh, get that scruffy creature out of here. Three murders so far, Jack. What's the connection? I don't know. Well, I hope there isn't any more. I think you've got a psychopath on the loose. Apparently, Uniform picked up a few blokes last night, and I've just realised that one of them is Harris's gardener, Mike Patterson. I'm going to interview him now. Look at this. Look. This is his pin number. What, you've got a bad memory, have you? Maybe I can refresh it for you. Do you know what this is? This is his credit card. What did it do? Fall out of the sky into your hole door? I don't know what you're on about. All that stuff that happened out there, that wasn't me. Sleeping with the lady of the house. Hey? She give you the cold shoulder. You lost your temper. No! The inspector. All right, all right. OK, OK. Michael, why the card and the number? She wouldn't pay me half the time. So we had me go down and get the money out myself out the hole in the wall. If I killed them, why would I hang around? Why wouldn't I clear out their account? I wouldn't hurt them. I wouldn't. Michael, Michael. Tell me what happened. I got the money out. I went back. And the house was just an inferno. I couldn't believe it. That's because you torched the building and then you went into hiding. No. Well, you didn't go back to your flat. You did a runner. My girlfriend chucked me out. I know where to go. Why did she chuck you out? Because he's got a violent temper. Oh, come on. Come all on. right, all right. I know, I know. I shouldn't exert undue emotional pressure on your client. Yes, all right, all right, carry on, go on. So you tell us, Michael. She found out I was having it off with Mrs. Harris. Oh. So, what did you do? Did you do a number on Mrs. Harris, eh? You know, did you say, poor me, let's go away together? Or did you say, give me the money or I will tell the world what you get up to with the hired help? No, I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. Listen, I looked after Mr. Harris. I helped him as much as I could. Why, because you felt guilty? Maybe, yeah. But I was the one who called his dad. And they had a hell of a row, a real screamer. She blamed me for it, because I'd phoned him like. He hated her, he did. You squeezed that number out of Harris. And then you murdered them both. <laughs> Come on, it wasn't me! Arnold Harris hated his daughter-in-law, so he gets the hump, loses his rag, and then tries to make out that it's something that it isn't. Do we believe that, or should we believe that? My money's on Patterson. Yeah, so is mine. Mind you, he has a point, though, isn't he? I mean, if he did kill them, why didn't he take all the money and then do a bunk? Unless he's boxing clever. Yeah, that's true. What did your Dr Harvey say? We're looking for a psychopath? Someone with a high IQ, who can plan his killings and carry them out? Who's in control all the time? Is that Patterson? No, of course it isn't. Tell you what, get Lonigan to go down the bank. Check his story, see if it fits. Blimey, Jack, we can't let him go unless we're 100%. I know, I know, but we can't miss a trick on this one, George. And I am not taking Arnold Harris out of the frame, either. And while you're down there, get me some fresh milk. 
Where's the boss this morning? Didn't come in. Poor old sod. Got any dust yet? End of the week. Yeah, you owe me. Mm. I know. I'm skint and all, you know. Not for a pipe, though. Right? <laughs> yeah, bloody chancy you are. Half twelve, yeah? Yeah. You're letting him go? He's not the killer. Well, you can't be 100% certain. No, I can't be 100% certain that I won't be struck on the head by a meteor at three o'clock this afternoon. I have no cause to hold Michael Patterson. His alibi stands. He has withdrawn money from the bank before, mostly on paydays. The public do have a right to certain assurances, Inspector. What, about serial killers or about lumps of rock falling on their heads? I can only assure that most of them won't be victims. That's a very cavalier manner. No, it's the truth. All right, if you want to hold on to Patterson and then face a grilling from any civil liberties group that cares to get out of bed this morning, well, you know, carry on. Effective policing in the community is every police officer's duty. Which we have failed to do when an itinerant old man gets savagely attacked. We've let him down as well. Well, your senior investigating officer, Jack. Thank you, sir. But if you're wrong... I know. I'll get thrown to the lions. If there's anything left of you to throw. Scares me to death watching him leave, Jack. He's not our man. Trust me. Where are we with this dead bassoon affair? Well, we've established it's a Reginald Malloy. The Musicians Union traces his address and his mother to London. In fact, a couple of Met boys are bringing her through to identify the body. I've, uh, I've got to get there now. All right, see you later. Jack. Yes. This dead man's father, Arnold Harris. Oh, yeah, what about him? Well, his, his, his name rang the old bell. All right, ding dong. Ding dong, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I thought I knew. Has he got form? No. No, but he was a witness at an armed robbery trial about 13 years ago, just before you got here. His face was all over the papers. I knew I'd seen him before. That's where one of our coppers got killed, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Arnold Harris was in the bank at the same time and made a positive ID of the gunman. That's all I can tell you. Hmm. Well, thank you, Chick. Something to ponder on, eh? Hmm? Jack? Mm hmm? I'll see you let your suspect go. Ooh. Yes? And anything else you can cross without falling over? Mr. Malloy, let's have a cup of tea, love. So, you say you used to live in Denton? Thirteen odd years ago. My Reggie was just a lad. I felt very uneasy when he said he was coming back. Oh? Why was that? Because of what happened. Which was what? The bank robbery. The bank robbery? I was a witness. It was very upsetting. And after that, man threatened me at the trial. Said he'd come and get me. It frightened me. I don't know how you managed to get it that wet. Mine always ends up in the bottom of the cup. I was always very good at risk assessment. Oh, you spend so much time in here, Jack, you could start your own TV cookery program. I'm very funny. All right. What's on your menu, Sergeant Brady? Right. A deceased equine has caused emotional trauma to the offspring of a member of the public who's involved in equestrian pursuits. Dead horse causes grief to young lady in Jodbers. Said offspring's parents are enduring emotional duress, which threatens marital unity and requires assistance of an official nature. Mummy and Daddy blame each other and decide to call in the coppers? In a word, yes. <laughs> See? 
Oh, Mullet and Bobcock will have you as an inspector in no time at all. Uh, no thanks, no overtime. Uh, Jack, I'm sorry, it's a missing girl and uh, under the circumstances. Yes, yes, of course. All right, come on, let's go. <clears throat> and uh, grab a handful of those sugar lumps on your way out. Don't let anyone see you. Sir? We're off to see the GGs. You make friends with the nags and you make friends with the owners. All right, come along, chop, chop. <laughs> Coming like that, are you? I'm only helping you move a wardrobe. I'm not decorating the lounge. Come on, I ain't got all day. I had to have a horse humanely destroyed. All right, what happened? She broke her leg. Look, I have a race meeting to get to. My wife can tell you what you want. All right. Wait, just a minute. Um, oh, excuse me. Your daughter is missing. Not the first time, Inspector. It's not a boyfriend causing an upset, it's something else. The last time, it was because I wouldn't let her get her navel pierced. For God's sake, her navel. She still had it done, no matter what I said. I'm sorry, Inspector, I think we're wasting your time. My wife's in that stable. Nice to see parental care in action. Psychologists wonder why kids go off the rails. You idiots! Don't you know not to step off unexpectedly behind a horse? No, I don't. Yeah, I'm all right, thank you very much. You ought to put a notice on its backside. If you hear about the insurance, my husband's already left. No, not actually. Detective Inspector Frost from Denton CID. And this is DC Donigan. Lonigan. If you spook a horse as powerful as this one, he'll kick you to death, no matter who you are. Oh, thank you. Just give me a minute. Those are sugar lumps. There you are. <laughs> Good boy. See? That's a client's horse. You didn't give it anything, did you? No. No. We were just being uh, friendly. And careful. I bite as well as kick. She is talking about the horse, I suppose. <laughs> right, go on. You have a look round. Hi, right, this way. Thank you. My husband's a trainer for other people's racehorses. We also own a few ourselves. So it was your racehorse that tried to leave its visiting card on my head, was it? He's a hunter. I ride for pleasure. I see. Perhaps you wouldn't mind telling me what's been happening here. A couple of days ago, my husband returned from France with half a dozen horses he's been racing over there. A few days later, the stables were broken into. And uh, the horse was injured? No, Inspector. The horse was frightened and kicked the back wall out of its stall. And broke its leg? Yes. So the vet shot it? Yes. A horse my daughter cared a great deal for. And your daughter was very upset, naturally. Naturally. So, well, one thing led to another. Burglary, injured horse, and your daughter ran off. We've had a number of burglaries over the past few months. The tack room, some saddles taken, this office, a TV stolen, a computer, that sort of thing. We're covered by insurance, thank heavens. It's been a tough year financially. What else? Nothing I can think of. Inspector, I do have another appointment. Well, we have heard a lot about your problems, haven't we? I thought that it might not be a bad idea if we had a little chat about your daughter. Like, what is her name, for example? Melanie Monkton likes the boys. I think she's been giving one of the stable lads the common as well. Oh, yeah, sounds to me she's a bit spoilt. Not unlike her mother in that respect. Well, her father seems to spend most of his time trying to keep the company in the black. 
I mean, uh, out of debt. Governor, hmm? you don't have to change the English language on my account. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, what about this dead nag? Well, the injured horse was destroyed by the vet in the early hours of the morning and its carcass removed and cremated. I see. Any more news on Melanie? Well, that's Stevie Nesbitt, the stable lad. He reckons we should have a chat to a jockey who rides regularly for her father, a bloke called Paul Matthews. I see. And where will we find him? <laughs> Come to the clerk of this case, please. Okay, thank you. Detective Inspector Frost. Oh, Denton CID, thank you. Well done. Ah, oh, cheers. Thank you. Ah, there you are, Mr. Matthews. The one you ride winners, you're a hard man to catch up with. No reporters in here, you should know better than oh, that. Come on, just a few words for my punters, especially my superintendent. I have to shower. Oh, all right, go on. I'll wait outside. I'm not that keen on the job. So, you've uh, never dated Melanie Monkton, then? The governor's daughter? Yeah. No chance. I've had the occasional social drink with her. Must have been tempted to try your hand, though, eh? Listen, Inspector, I wouldn't mind having a fling with Melanie. No man in his right mind would say no if it was an offer. But it wasn't, so I didn't. Oh. I've no idea where she is. But she had an on and off boyfriend. He's at an agricultural college somewhere. This uh, horse that they put down, that was one of Moncton's horses that was racing in France, wasn't it? Yes, uh, she was called Starlight Runner, a nice filly. Really? That's a um, female horse, isn't it? A female horse is a filly until she's five, and she's a mare. She could also be called a mare if she's been mated with the stallion, irrespective of her age. Well, it's much easier in the animal world, isn't it? <laughs> She'd have won some serious money for Moncton. Accidents happen. Some horses trip over their own feet. It's lucky that the Monktons were insured then, isn't it? Nothing unusual in that, Inspector. All right? I've got a race. Yeah, OK. All right, just a minute. Oi, oi. Is it worth the flutter with you on its back or what? Not this race. Try misdemeanor in the 4.30. Sounds about right. Your killer isn't a monster with two heads, Jack. He's the person sitting next to you on the bus or train every morning. Who is it that he hates so much other than society? Is his mother, his father, authority? All of the above. When he's finished killing, there'll be a void in his life. There's a strong possibility he'll then kill himself. You can't spend the rest of your life washing cars, that's all I know. And you're on the ladder to success, are you? I've got you? plans. No, I'm late, I've got to go. Uh, you on for the game tonight? Yeah, sure. See you later. See you later. I don't pay you enough to have an executive lunch, hour. Oh, sorry, Mr Granger, I met a mate down the pub. I work late. Yeah, see you do. Ah! Yeah, he doesn't take to most. <laughs> Pungent smells from the garden, probably. <laughs> well, that says a lot for me, then. <laughs> well, you didn't send me some flowers by any chance, did you? Um, no. Someone sent me a gorgeous bunch of flowers, and all the card said was, thanks for showing me the way. Oh. Makes me feel like a regular Florence Nightingale. <laughs> I tell you what, I could invite you out for dinner, though, by way of saying thank you. All right. Uh, that's if I'm not treading on anyone's toes. Oh, no. The flowers were probably from a client. It's easy to see why. 
Well, I'll um, phone you then, shall I? Yes, do. Good. Oh. Goodbye. Bye. Yes, you and me both. Get it yourself. Come on. Yeah. Jack. Yeah. Reggie Malloy, the drowned musician. His mother's made a positive ID. I think we've got a breakthrough. These are not random killings. Arnold Harris was a witness at the trial of an armed robbery 13 years ago. Irene Malloy, who is our dead musician's mother, was also a witness at the trial. Yes, I remember. Charlie Lehman. Real thug, brutal as they come. Well, was he paroled, perhaps? Or is he getting even with those who gave evidence? No, sir, no such luck. Died from a heart attack in a prison hospital a year ago. Mm. Ah. Well, um, someone who served time with him, then. A cellmate carrying out revenge attacks. Yeah, that's exactly how I thought, sir. What about this missing girl? Her car was found abandoned. No connection between her family and the layman trial. A random abduction, then? Possibly. I don't believe it was an abduction. You hope? All right, um, thank you, Jack. Just get on with looking for layman's known associates. Hmm? So? Perhaps it's time to bring in a more senior officer from another division. More resources and experience. Frost has my full support, sir. Admirable loyalty. But careers aren't made by backing losers. And sooner or later, Frost's luck will run out. You can't accuse me of that. Melanie's been using my company card. I've never even been in this hotel. When I phoned, they said a young woman and a man who sounds a lot like you had booked the room. Are you sleeping with her? Are you? He's off, Fiona. I'm sleeping with you. Why have you forgotten? You better not be lying, Paul. If Harry finds out we're involved, he'll go ballistic. But if you're messing about with our daughter, he'll kill you. All right, listen up, everybody. Come on, fingers out. Now, we've managed to trace three more witnesses who were at uh, Layman's trial. One is a Tony Chalmers. He's a farmer. Uh, a Mrs Evelyn Post, who appropriately enough runs a village post office. And third... Who's the third, George? Hmm. Hmm? Oh, uh, the other is a Susan Talbot. <laughs> She's a local woman. Right. We've also managed to trace uh, Charlie Layman's ex-common-law wife, and I'm going to be interviewing her in ten minutes ago. As far as Layman's concerned, background, connections, anything. Yeah, everything is important. We collate everything. Nothing is insignificant, right? <laughs> Well, come on, we don't serve tea. Hey, jump up, come on. What are you going to be doing? Well, it's Susan Talbot first, then I'm off to see Chalmers. He's the bloke that tackled Layman in the bank. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you after seeing Layman's ex? Further information, then I'm going to take a female colleague out for dinner. That's very good of you, sir. No, not you. You stay where you are. If I were you, I'd get yourself a pork pie from the canteen and a road map because you're going to take in the glories of the British countryside. I want you to interview Mrs Evelyn Post, a lady of age, as we say. All right, tread carefully, speak softly, and don't dunk your biscuits. All right, now. All right. And heel. <clears throat> it's definitely improving.
I gave up on Charlie and his beatings a lifetime ago. Maybe longer. He must have had some mates that he brought round the flat. Mates he went drinking with, people he did jobs with. And there's someone he was thick with. Talking to you does me no good. You're in for theft, social security fraud, and dealing in skag. Now you help me and you help yourself. You try making money any other way, other than going on the game, and I got tired of that. Sod off, Inspector. I'm in rehab. That's the best I can do. You didn't even bring me a packet of fags, you tight ass. Oh, yes, I did. I bought you a carton at the front desk. Enough for you and enough to trade with. He had no mates. He was strictly a loner. You check. I bet even in the nick he spent most of his time in solitary. What about kids, you and Charlie? Everything about Charlie brought pain. When he went inside, I cheered for a bloody week. We never wrote, we never spoke again. End of story. Good riddance. If I had any more to tell you, I would. Sorry I couldn't give you more time, Sergeant. We've had a big stock clearance. Now I've got to make sure all the new lines are in. Mrs Torblett, you're certain nothing unusual has happened? I'm positive. But if I think of anything, I'll phone you. OK. Thank you. When Lehman threatened us from the witness box, it was quite unnerving. But they were empty threats. Nothing happened, of course. My husband and I went on as normal. And no one's made any unusual approaches recently? No strangers about? No, no, not round here. We'd notice if anyone was out of place. <clears throat> And Jenny does um, a small grocery run to the old folk every week, so she'd have heard. <laughs> we don't even get tourists down here. Jenny's family, is she? The one in the shop. She's my eldest. She's been a godsend since Norman died. Uh, that's my husband. Late last year. Oh, if it hadn't been for Jenny and, and young Colin, I don't know what I would have done. Colin's your son? Oh, no. He was a young lad who helped out around the place. A very willing pair of hands. He stayed on for a couple of weeks after Norman's death. So you grappled with Charlie Lehman after he shot the policeman in the bank? Right enough. He uh, hit me with the butt of his shotgun. Saw enough 12 bore. I put one on the ceiling to scare everyone. Blast that poor copper in the chest. Had no time to reload when I had to go. I wouldn't have tried otherwise. An evil looking beggar, though. You made no mistake identifying him at his trial. Not a chance. Before he was sentenced, he threatened all the witnesses. Didn't bother me, none. Glad I had a hand in putting him away. An event like that could make take stock of your life. I'm sure you're right. Your wife must have been a bit uneasy, though. Yeah, she's strong, she is. I tell you what, I wouldn't have got through this year without her. When our Timothy died, she... Well, I went to pieces. She was much tougher than me. Uh, Timothy, that was your son? Yeah. Ten years old, he was. I'm sorry. He was down in the lane on his bike. Hit and run. I never got the bastard, did it? Coppers reckon there was a kid joyriding. When was that, Mr Chalmers? Seven months ago. She doesn't even talk about it. For me, I can blub just at the thought of it all. A month after he died, couldn't even feed the beast. Useless I was. Lucky I had Alan here. Is that a family member? 
No, no, he's a casual labourer. Been here a few weeks before Tim died and stuck with us for a while after, then he left. Can you describe him? This is uh, very nice, but really it should have been my treat. I prefer it like this. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Remember I told you, secret admirers are not unusual. Lots of clients think they fall in love with their therapist. Comes with the territory. No, sorry, I wasn't snooping. It was the card had fallen on the floor. Of course you were snooping. Yes, of course, I was snooping. It's what you do. Mm -hmm. I snoop too, into people's minds. Well, this is a very nice surprise. Oh, life's too short to lack some spontaneity. There. It's very thoughtful of you. Oh, no, it's just a small way of saying thank you for uh, all the help you've given me. Less is more. Oh, oh thank you. So, hmm? uh, widowed, divorced, obstinately single? Um, one. Uh, you? Two. Uh, <laughs> Recently? Hmm? Uh, um, no. no. Me neither. I'm it. No parents, no offspring, just boring old work. Oh, I remember me. I don't even have a cat. I've never even thought of owning one. <laughs> you do have a dog, though. Hmm? Oh, uh, yeah, well, um, just, just temporary. Oh, the dinner beckons. Ah. Would you like to come and help me? Sorry about that. He's probably a bit jumpy being on his own. You can bring him in if you like. I don't mind dogs. No, 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 no. He'd be all right. He's probably seen a cat or something he fancies chasing, but, uh, you know, he's getting a bit past it, so it's <laughs> probably just wishful thinking. Every dog has his day. Chilly? No, thanks. I'm quite warm, actually. Oh, <laughs> that chilly. <laughs> Yes, please. Thank you. Mm. She'll come home when she's good and ready. Just like the last time. And the time before. For God's sake, she's never without that damn cell phone. I'm trying to remain calm. I don't want to be calm. I want to know where she is. Fiona, she's a clever, bright girl. She's not going to take any unnecessary risks. She's not going to get involved with strangers. She's going to be... She's doing this despite me. I know what she's up to. Don't look so bloody startled. She's your daughter as well. Who's there? I've written five books on psychology in five years. I have a thriving practice, 
There are lectures, seminars, and a dozen committees I'm on. Who's got time for a personal life? I had one once. <laughs> Seems a long time ago now. I've promised myself I'm going to slow down. Mm. Thank you. This year. I'm still young enough to want some of the simple pleasures in life. Jack, I don't know whether you like your women to be old-fashioned or not, but would you be offended if I suggested we go to bed? Together, that is. Well, don't go into shock, Jack. I don't make a habit of saying things like that. Well, the witnesses are safe. If Lehman used someone in prison to do the Revenge Act for him, he's had over a year to do it. What about our fourth witness? This is uh, Talbot. No threats, nothing untoward, divorced. Both parents died more than ten years ago. She has a brother, Lionel Grange, who lives and works locally. Oh, uh, well. Oh, I don't know. There is something in common with these two other witnesses. Oh, yeah, it was about time. What is it? Both witnesses had hired help working for them for a few months. Mrs Post had a snapshot. It's a bit fuzzy, but we made up an e-fit. Yeah, I had Chalmers in, and he helped me make up this one. That bloke worked for Chalmers for two months earlier this year. Wait a minute. This could be the same man. I mean, look at the eyes. It's the eyes. You can change their hair, grow a moustache, change their name, but... Can't change the eyes. These two have got something else in common. Both the witnesses had a bereavement. One a son, the other a husband. Harris's son and daughter in law Mrs Malloy's son. Hmm. Maybe it's not the witnesses the killer's after. No. Maybe not. Maybe it's the relatives. The killer is making the witnesses suffer in the worst possible way. Blimey, Jack. Susan Talbot's brother. Get an area car over to his place right away. I'll meet it there. George, I want you and Ronnie to go and double-check the prison. See if there's been any male regular visitors who saw Layman. The killer is an outsider. you for your backup. Mr. Grange? Yeah? Your sister Susan Talbot? Nothing wrong, is there? Not if I can help it. My sister is the witness, not me. Yes, well, we're concerned about the witness's relatives. We think that the killer may be targeting them. Now, I can give you a couple of police officers in your yard, if you like. No, you're all right. Thanks, Inspector, but I'm OK. No one gets past my dog without me knowing about it anyhow. It's only me and my sister can get past if you tear anyone else apart. Yeah, all right. Well, I can't force you, obviously. Have you taken on any new staff recently or struck up any new friendships? I mean, has anything unusual happened? Oh, nothing. 
I've had a lad working here a couple of months, Billy Simpson. Yeah. Does he look uh, like either of these two? Nah, nothing like him. All right, I'll have a chat with him anyway while I'm here. Hey, put that down! Billy, stop playing silly bugging! Are you all right there, dog? Good boy. Hey, you! Sorry, didn't see him. Didn't see him. Well, you, do you live round here, do you? Ruddy close. Oh, right. I want you to go out there and have a nice chat to those two very nice police officers. I haven't done nothing. Nobody said that you had. But in order to eliminate you from our inquiries, we have to ask you a few nosy questions. Now, go on, get going. Three. Next time, check before you put a good card down. Is he in any bother? Not unless you know something I don't. Nah. Yeah. Right, well, uh, thanks for the warning, Inspector. If I do get any trouble, I'll always let my dog loose. Mind you, then you'll probably be arresting me for assault. <laughs> yeah, most probably. <laughs> you was nearly tin dog. No CCTV records beyond a couple of months at the prison. And no regular visitors, but Layman wrote a letter a month. Yeah, well, I bet that address has long since been abandoned. Oh, that reminds me, before I forget, this Lionel Grange, he may feel safe with this vicious dog of his, but I'd feel happier if an area car went and visited his yard once in a while. Look, I'm concerned that we're not moving quickly enough on this missing Moncton girl. HMI thinks there's a connection with this. Well, I think he's wrong. All right, Harry Moncton is up to his eyes in debt and, well, he still lives high off the hog, but... Well, uh, last night, Paul Matthews, now he's a jockey who often rides for the Moncton. Yes, I know Matthews. I've already talked to him. Well, he was assaulted, hospitalised. Didn't make any official complaint. No idea of the assailant, sir? No, but Matthews is saying that Harry Moncton is behind it. Is he indeed? Now, I wonder why he would be saying that. George, I tell you what, go over to Monkton's place, will you? Keep him under observation. OK. So, you think he could be implicated in something else? Well, let's look at it this way, sir. There is a faint aroma of performing seals. What? It stinks. Oh, there you are, Mr. Matthews. What do you do, fall off a horse? Moncton had someone do this to me. What, because you wouldn't ride one of his nags? No, 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 I don't think so. It's probably got something to do with the fact that you know about this dead horse. Moncton is up to his neck in debt. There's been a series of petty burglaries, followed by this rather convenient death of a fairly well-insured racehorse. I had nothing to do with that. Oh, don't burst a stitch. If you had nothing to do with it, you must have your suspicion. Like I do. The night the horse died, I saw Moncton drive out of the stables towing a horse box. Next morning, the vet came and put Starlight Runner down. Check his books. Moncton's a bloody crook. Yes, well, I'm well aware of that. I checked out the paperwork and some of these burglaries, they don't add up. If you saw that horse box leaving the yard that night, why didn't you say something? Come on. I'm having an affair with his wife. That's why Moncton did this to me. I won't be able to ride for weeks now. Oh, really? Well, a good hiding halts a good riding. It was a bit of a gallop towards the end, but we finally got there, didn't we? Oh, well, uh, all right, Mr. Matthews. Don't get up, find me own way out. This is our third evening in a row, Governor. We're not even sure the Monktons are up to anything. 
The Monktons are up to something. And thanks to forensic working office hours, there's no scientific evidence to help us with the murders, is there? Anyway, you haven't got anything else better to do with it. Hang on. Why, right, George, where is he? Monkton's been sitting in a village pub for the past hour. He's now gone down a lane towards a small holding. There's some old railway wagons down there from what I can see. George, you take a stroll in the countryside and see if there's a good-looking nag in one of those wagons. And mind where you step. I don't want the countryside brought back into the office. Hang about, George. We're under starter's orders. Now, if there is a good-looking horse that's better than your average donkey and it answers to the name of Starlight Runner, you do something like arrest Harry Monkton. We're off following his wife. Out. Right, Donegan. The going is good to firm. And if my hunch is correct, it's odds on we're going to win the penalty shootout. Mixed metaphor, sir. I don't care whether it's mixed licorice or sorts, as long as we get a result. We'll soon have you running, my darling. Another name. Whole new life. I went to London with some friends. Just leaving your car at the side of the road, and you couldn't let us know. It broke down. I couldn't find my phone. Look, you're interested in horses and the men who ride them. That's your life. I want my own. I'm not coming home. I want money, or I tell Dad everything. I don't think so. You've been using my company credit card on hotels. You never check those cards. It's time to grow up, Melanie. I was having sex with Paul Matthews long before you pranced into view, and at far better hotels, I might add. I had a friend teach him a lesson. It was you who hurt him? You bitch! Cleverer than that to tap dance on my head. They found an empty cash box and enough porno videos to open a shop. Oh, no wonder Grange didn't want any of our men in his yard. Yeah. Oh. Well, he died in the wee small hours. Killer probably bludgeoned with a lump of metal, then chucked it. Ooh, a lump of metal. Are you sure about that? Sarcasm, Frost. The last refuge of wit. Yes, I know, but I'm getting desperate. And you stating the obvious doesn't help, thank you, Mystic Meg's personal doctor. <clears throat> Where was uniform when all this happened? Oh, well, we had a patrol car go by, but they can't be everywhere, Jack. Nobody heard the dog? Not a peep. How did the killer get past the dog? No idea. The dog handler came out this morning, got a noose round its neck and hauled it off to the kennels. He wasn't drugged, he wasn't hurt. by all of this, George. The sister wasn't involved. I know that. What are you up to? Finding some quick answers. Right. You broke into the caravan last night and murdered your boss. That's 
all right. No one could get in there. Someone did. All right. <laughs> all right. Open the cage. Come on, open the cage. All right, sling him in. I said sling him in. Jack, you can't do that. You can't do that. Well, who else could it have been? I just cut to the chase. Look at it this way. I've saved a day's questioning in the interview room. All right, get him down to Nick. You're cutting corners, Jack. You're threatening witnesses and you're going to get yourself into trouble. Don't try to tell me how to carry out an investigation. I need answers, I need them quickly. And you're overstepping the mark. You're going to blow yourself and this investigation out of the water. Look, is that what you want? Self-destruction isn't in my game plan, George. And if you don't like it, get yourself reassigned. Jack! All right, I know. All right, I'm sorry. It's just that this murder has got me beat at every corner and I don't like it. I want him caught and I want him put away for the rest of his natural. Oh, I know that Simpson's involved. Let's get him down the nick and interview him. By the book. So, Billy Simpson is not the killer. No, so no forensic on him at all. But he's an accessory. Yeah, well, I mean, Simpson admits that he was out to rob Grange, but uh, killing him was not part of the plan at all. Anyway, he got so scared, he drunk himself under the table. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to lift him this morning. But you've insisted all along that the killer got close to his victim weeks prior to a killing. Hmm. But this time, the killer used Simpson. You see, he made pals with Billy Simpson, and then he couldn't help noticing that Simpson had befriended Granger's dog. And we're none the wiser what the killer looks like, or even his real name. Yeah, so we're making a composite picture of the efits, and with Simpson's help, we should have a face. Uh, we do know that he was a part-time car washer at Arnold Harris's garage, and that his name is Terry Robertson. Ah, then we've pinned him down. Well, no, not quite, sir. Um, well, he hasn't turned up for work in the last couple of days, and there's no known address. So, we're none the closer to establishing a connection between victims and killer. And he might already be lining up his next one. False name, no fixed abode, no identification. Killer 6, Denton CID, nil. That's what I call a relegation result. Wouldn't you, Frost? I told you, Charlie's life was his own. Tessa, Charlie breathed some sort of hatred into somebody. Mr. Frost, there's big areas of my life that I can't remember, yeah? You know, I, I see pictures, Memories like, but, but they have no names. And some of the people have no faces. You were all over the country, but for seven years before the shooting, Charlie was in and around Denton. There must have been someone. Yeah, I suppose. We lived in squats. Then we had a council house. He did jobs. He dragged us round from pillar to post, and I couldn't leave him while he was on the outside. He would have killed one of us. Us? <sighs> Mistakes happen. I thought you said you didn't have any kids. Well, they whipped him into care. I was out here on anything I could get, down my throat or in my arm. But where is he now? I don't know. I don't care. It was as bad as his father. Like I said, everything about Charlie caused pain. Now Geoffrey was no better. It's Charlie Lehman's son, Geoffrey. He was taken into care when he was 11 years old. Social services did a report on the family. Thug of a father, drug addict for a mother. 
We missed it, George. Oh. Poor Commodore wife. The boy was taken into care under her name, Geoffrey Meadows. Jack, everything in here indicates that Lehman's son was removed for his own good. He can't be seeking revenge for his father. The father may have brutalised the son, but when you're that age, I suppose any attention is better than none. And who's the greatest influence on a boy's life? His father. Sir, hmm? here. It's the psychologist's assessment and a recommendation for putting the boy in care. This is Perm's report. Terry, I think we're making good progress. See you next week. Oh, come on, come on. Pam, are you there? If you are there, pick up the phone. This is urgent. It's Jack. It's urgent. Hello, Jack. Thank God. Pam, listen, listen very carefully. Have you had any young men as clients in the last few weeks or months? New clients? A couple, yes. All right, now listen, uh, about 11 years ago, you did a psychological evaluation on a disruptive family. Now, it was a mother and a son. Their name was Meadows, Tessa Meadows. Can you hang on a minute? I've just got to let one of my clients out. Goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, Dr Hardley. Hello, Jack. What's this got to do with any of my current clients? Now, you were instrumental in removing the son from the family. The mother's name was Meadows, but the father's name was Charlie Lehman. Now, that never appeared in any of the reports. If you've had any new clients recently... Jack, one of my young clients has just left. Pam. Jeff Meadows is about five foot ten. He's got short, dark brown hair, blue eyes, and he wears a cuff in his ear. It's not a ring, it's a cuff. But he uses the false name of Terry Robertson. What? Now, listen, I want you to lock all the doors and windows. There was another murder last night. And I think that Charlie Lehman's son has broken cover. I'll be with you as quick as I can. Roared out of the driveway. A man was driving. Yeah, we've got the make and index number, Jack. We'll find her. Well, what are we waiting here for? If she's still alive, we think that she'll be within the Denton area. I will act as search coordinator, Jack. Yes. Mobile and air patrols are already searching for her car. She's got two hours if she's lucky. You made them send me away. But my dad needed me. He wrote to me every month. You have no idea what you and the others did to us. He abused you, Geoffrey. You needed care. He wasn't a good father. Not what he did to you and your mother. I think you know that. He was my father! You're the last. I promised him I would hurt 
them all just like I was her. There was no one else in my life. But I've got no family who'll suffer. My death won't achieve anything. You're special. Well, there's a bonus. You and the inspector. I'll watch him suffer. Because he'll never find you. Take your chances down there. Maybe you'll beat the water. Find a way out. back there. I'm heading towards the landfill site. Yeah, all right. We'll keep in contact. Control to all units. Dr. Hartley's car has been abandoned near the North Denton landfill site. Suspect is on foot, heading towards the Denton bypass. This is D.I. Frost. I'm nearby. Now keep uniform back. I don't want to panic him. I can help, I guarantee it. I'll do everything that I can to help. I promise.
Meadows. Meadows, listen to me. Me Meadows, can you hear me? Where is she? Meadows, where is she? We're too late. Meadows has killed himself. Did he say anything before he died? No. Tell him to wait. Hang on, Jack. Jack, uh, check your maps. Now, a few years ago, I was in charge of an anti-terrorist exercise less than a mile from where her car was abandoned. There's an old auxiliary pumping house. I'm sending a car for the water engineer. He'll bring up his maps of the system. This way, sir. What's happened? They're just down here. Hmm? They're just down here. Yes. Someone's flooded this section of pipes. It's an old backup system. I've shut the valves down. Are there any inspection hatches to these pipes? Yeah, there's one there. There's yeah. another one All right. here. OK, thank you. You come with me. But after this second hatch, the water goes deep underground. She's down there. She'll go with it. <laughs> go and fetch a crowbar or something, will you? Where's the next one? Get this open with it. You took your time getting there. Well, you're a difficult person to track down. <laughs> you scared me to death. I wasn't feeling that wonderful myself. I've heard that you're going to be the captain of the next Olympic swimming team. No, I thought I'd try for the I should have screamed louder event. <laughs> Well, listen, Dr. Frost recommends some spoiling once you get out of here. Whining and dining. My turn this time. Jack, right at the end, I'd done everything I could, but I had nothing left. I just let go. I was ready to die. Hey, hey, come on. Come on, you've got to get out of here. I want you to hear my talk. I've done all that swatting for nothing, you know. <laughs> hmm? Oh, uh, I think they're uh, telling me to go. I don't want to push me up. That'd make a change. 
now listen, when you're ready, I'm going to come and take you home. I'm recommending we withhold your budget until my disciplinary and administrative recommendations are instituted. I'd say there are severe doubts as to the overall efficiency here at Denton. Now, just a moment, sir. We've arrested a drug pusher for peddling ecstasy to kids, a woman for ABH, and her husband for killing a horse for the insurance money. And last, but not least, We've tracked down the murderer of six people. Yes, an effective cohesion of resources resulting in the reduction of undesirable elements in society wishing to commit offences. Or to put it in my language, we nick the lot. Not a bad result for any division. And successfully conducted by an officer holding the George Cross. I think that looks fairly strong on paper, don't you? Sir? All right. You've got away with it this time. But one day, the results won't match the methods employed. Tread carefully, both of you. Thank you, Jack. No, thank you. I think you did a cracking good job, sir. <laughs> 